Father, we thank you, Lord, that uh, uh, your word is truth, Father God. And, and Lord, that your word is healing, Lord. And, and, and your, your word restores us, God. So, Lord, I pray right now that uh, I just be a vessel. And, Lord, that you would uh, be able, Holy Spirit, that you would be able to flow through me. And, uh, Lord, we just submit ourselves to you. And Lord, we want to hear what you want to say to us today. And um, God, we love you um, that you would even consider meeting with us. So Lord, I pray right now that, uh, Lord, it's confessed that there's nothing good within me. And I just pray that you would just uh, uh, remove myself aside, Holy Spirit, have your way, and uh, prepare our hearts to receive your word. And Lord, we, we, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord. And, uh, Take control of the service, Lord. Take control of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so like I was saying, um, you just had very few few days to prepare for this, so um, I'll try to keep it as short as possible. Um, so today, you know, I was thinking about, thinking that, you know, a lot of, I have a lot of friends that are graduating and uh, no longer here, but, <laughs> but, uh, that's that. That's cool. Um, but I was just thinking about uh, how folks, in general, they just have dreams, and um, different types of dreams. You know, you have the one where you can fall asleep, and you have dream, daydream, or dream, or you can have a dream and a sense of a goal as well. And so uh, God was really just laying that on my heart um, this past this past week weekend, and, and how. Um, you know, oftentimes we, we look back and we're like, you know, is this what I really wanted to do with my life? Or was this really one of my dreams? Or is this one of my goals? Or, or something like that, you know? And then uh, I just I just wanted to kind of give you guys a little insight uh, with what uh, uh, was uh, uh, kind of taught to me or, or kind of Holy Spirit just kind of laying on my heart. So if you guys have your Bibles with you, if you guys can turn to Numbers uh, chapter 12, we're just going to read verse 6. Numbers 12 is going to be basically our main text today, but um, I want to jump around a lot. So, but anyway, okay, why did I say that? I say that 
to give you guys that, that idea of, of what a dream is. And so let's look at Deuteronomy. So Numbers uh, chapter 12, verse 6 says, God gives dreams, right? And then Deuteronomy also it says this, though, in Deuteronomy. It says, uh, if a prophet or one who foretell, foretells by dreams appears among you and announces to you a sign or wonder, and if that sign or wonder uh, spoken takes place, and the prophet says, let us follow other gods, and let us worship them, you must not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer. The Lord, your God, is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart and with all your soul. It is the Lord, your God, who you must follow, and him you must revere. Keep his commandments and obey him. Serve him and hold fast to him. Okay, so I read those two scriptures. So one says God gives dreams, and the other one says that, hey, if a prophet comes in with a dream that's like not right, then don't listen to him, right? So I say, I say that because dreams can be given by anybody, okay? It could be, you know, really bad pizza that you ate last night, and you wake up and you're like, oh, man, that's a weird dream. You know, so, so dreams are, dreams are, you know, it, it can be given by anybody. Besides that matter, but I know, see, besides that matter, God is giving, the Holy Spirit is giving you a dream, all right? Because you have a dream for yourself. You know, when I was younger, I wanted to be in the NBA. You know, when I was in high school, that's my dream. You know, I just couldn't get past five foot three, so I didn't make it. So, <laughs> but, um, and, and Brother yeah, I know he wants to be in the NBA too. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, um, you know, that's, that's, that's our goal sometimes. You know, we have attainable dreams, and sometimes dreams are irregular. Not, they're not, they don't have to follow reason, you know. Uh, that's what makes dreams a dream. But then, um, the particular dream I have, I want to talk to you guys about today is uh, a God-given dream. Dream that God gives us. You know, even like even with, like uh, my idea of being in the NBA, that could have been a God-given dream. You know, if I really applied myself, maybe. But no, it's okay. But anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> but I want to say, I want to say this: God has a better dream. You know, because we we have our own dreams, we have our own goals, we set our own uh, our uh, own plans up. But I want to share with you guys these scriptures. You guys don't have to turn here. But I just want to share that, you know, God has made a plan for us already. He has a dream for us as well. So in, in Proverbs uh, 14, 12, I'm just going to tell you how it is. This is, this is Proverbs. is a really good book to tell you about wisdom and just share it how it is. You know, very polite. It's very true. So Proverbs verse 14, 12 says, There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof, are the ways of death. Okay. Proverbs 16.25 says the same thing. It says, There is a way that seems right unto a man, but, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Okay. So the Bible's repeating. He's trying to give a theme out here, okay? It's worth repeating. And then, and then Proverbs 16.1, it says, to the, to the man belongs the plans of the heart, but the Lord comes, um, but, with, but from the Lord comes the reply of the tongue. Okay? And in Proverbs uh, 16, it says, A man's heart uh, decides his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. And in Proverbs 16, 2 says, All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirit. Proverbs 21, uh, verse 2 says, Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. So you see, we got we have plans for our lives. We got uh, ideas of what type of spouse we're supposed to marry, what what kind of life we're supposed to live after we get married. We have we have all the stuff, ideas, and plans that we 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 unconsciously have in our hearts already, and which are, which is fine, which is good, you know, because God places those things in our heart. You know, God places dreams in our hearts and um, goals and visions. Um, but the way we plan things out, you know, uh, it, it's not wrong to plan things out. God says, in fact, that, you know, it's good to be um, a planner, somebody who is uh, ready for change. But at the same time, God weighs our heart, like Proverbs says. He ponders, uh, he, he weighs the spirit, he ponders the heart, and then he directs our path. 
You know, he directs our step. Maybe we're looking to go left, but he tells us to go right. You know, um, but it's still going to lead in the same direction. You know, our dreams. Um, I, I want to look at it like this. You know, your dream is attainable, and it's not something too far off for God to do. You know, maybe, but maybe it's just not the right time for for your dream to happen. But um, so, so I, I just, I just, I just want to give you guys this because God is, God is here to fulfill fulfill your dreams, but not only fulfill your dreams, but to fulfill his this ultimate goal of, 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 of loving uh, those around us and um, and, and us and, and his ultimate plan is to be with us uh, for us to be with him because it says here that that, that in, uh, actually if you guys can turn here to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22 and 23 I'm um, chapters 1 verse 22 and 23 I'll wait till you guys get there It says, um, oh, okay, actually, before we, get to, before we read that, I'm just going to read this real quick, too, okay? You guys don't have to turn here. <laughs> it says in Job, okay, just to reiterate on the dream, it says, for God speaks, it says, Job 33, it says, for God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, while slumbering in their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction in order to turn man from his deeds and conceal pride from man. He keeps his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. So God speaks to dreams. God speaks to your dream, even your goals, you know, the plans that you have for your life. Um, but if you are there in Ephesians, let us, let, let's read it. It says, and God placed all things under his feet and appointed to him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, and the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. So why did I read that? It's because, it says in Isaiah also, it says that God's ways are not our ways. Alright? Because so, it says, because the heavens are, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways than our ways. You see, we can only dream so far. Our goals are so uh, finite, all right? But his goals are infinite. And when I read Ephesians, I imagine, like, you guys ever have, like, like latex gloves that, or some kind of glove that you, you put you put your hand in that, like, uh, I don't know what to use it for, but whatever. <laughs> but like you're cleaning something, and you put it in, and, and you feel like the the the, the plastic of the, the, the glove, the latex, just like just as you put your hand in, it it seals it, you know, almost airlocks it. So like every every um, area that might be empty is now full with your hand, right? With your hand. So imagine that with God, you know, because because you're the glove. You're the latex glove, and he puts his hands in your glove, and then he covers everything. He fills it up. So that's when, when I read that scripture, I, I see that God is is coming in to like I may have some empty spaces in my life. I may have some questions, some doubts, and things I don't know. But he comes in and he puts his hands in, and he fills every question, every doubt. He fills every empty space, and he makes it whole. All right. So that's what his dream, that's what God's dream does. Because he takes your dream and he fulfills it. Not to say that he accomplishes it, but he makes it fuller. You know, makes it whole. Makes it complete. So maybe you're married. Maybe you're married, he makes your marriage complete. You know, maybe you're, you're, at, you're at your job and you're trying to figure things out. He makes it complete. I'm still trying to figure that one out. But <laughs> praise God. I love my job. But anyway. Um... Uh, so, so, so I'm just saying, God is, uh, God is here, and He may have dreams, and He wants to fulfill them in His way, in His time, 
and uh, you won't you won't be definitely satisfied because it says in Psalms 16 11 it says thou will show me the paths of life in thy presence is the fullness of joy and at that right hand there are pleasures forever so in his presence wherever he is at there's fullness of joy you know there's pleasures when, you, when you're with him so he's got a dream for you and I, I just want to read to you guys you guys probably already know this verse, but I just want to read this from 1 Corinthians 2, 9. It says, No eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor, nor mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. So, yeah, our dreams are finite. His dreams are infinite. His goals for our lives are so much better than what we have right now. So, uh, you know, pray it back. If you have a dream, pray it back to Him. And then, so, moving on, <laughs> I don't, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes, you know, I'll take the example of myself trying to be in the NBA again, you know, maybe you just think that it's over, you know, you're not going to be able to um, accomplish that anymore. Probably, that's probably right. But, <laughs> but, um, but what I'm saying here is that, you know, there's a lot of times where you have goals and you have visions and you see yourself in this place in five years and you see yourself in this position in ten years or you see yourself like, living better, I don't know what your goal is out there, but there are many times where we just begin to doubt. You know, we begin to just look and say, you know, am I ever, is this ever going to change? Am I ever going to change? Is, is my current situation, could God really take me out of this? Or if, or if you don't know God, you're just like, you know, nothing's going to change. I tell you, God is the difference maker. He is. Because I'll give you guys some examples here real quick. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter your situation because it's never too late for God to fulfill your dream. Abraham is one of those people. He waited for Isaac almost his entire lifetime. He's his only son. What well, kind of his only son? But uh, only promised son. Jacob. Jacob waited 14 years for Rachel because he had Leah the first time. So, um, but, you know, he's willing to wait. Um, and it doesn't matter, it definitely doesn't matter the situation. It says, it says in Hebrews, this is a, uh, a picture of Abraham going to sacrifice Isaac because it was his only son that God had promised him. And then it was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice. When God was testing him, Abraham, who had received God's promise, was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. Even though God had told him, Isaac is the son uh, through whom your descendants will be accounted. Uh, Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God would be able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. So it doesn't matter the situation. It could be, it could almost, almost be conflicting. It could be contradic uh, contradiction. It could be contradiction there. But God is, God is, you know, sometimes a God of contradiction. Well, he's not a God of confusion, but he uses contradictions to prove his love and his faithfulness. And then another, another time is Genesis 18, where Sarah laughs. It says, Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, shall I have, my, shall I have the pleasure, my Lord, uh, of being also... Uh, oh, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, also being old? Okay. And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? Saying, Shall I, uh, shall I surely bear his child since I am old? Is, is there anything too hard for the Lord? At the point at the point in time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. So you just stare and laugh at the at the remarks of what God had promised. And so, you know, God is God is there to reassure us. God is there to remind us of what He has what He has said to you when you were younger as a child. Or as you're a child in the Lord right now, He is there to, to fulfill. He's gonna He's gonna walk with you. He's gonna walk it out with you and show that He's the God of this situation, of this contradiction, of this lifestyle. He's gonna He's gonna take over. So, uh, what is what, is, what does that mean for us? Well, so number one, it doesn't matter about our situation. It's never too late. 
but it also asks us to hope. It also causes us to hope in, in God. Not in our dream, because our dream is far distant, you know, but, but, but our hope is in God. So it says in, it says in the first Corinthians 9, um, verses 26 and 27, it says, um, I can find it, praise God. Okay, if you guys want to turn it, you guys can. It says, therefore, I run, thus, not with uncertainty. Thus, I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body, and I bring it into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. So as I, as I read that, and, um, I, 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 and I meditate on that. It's like, you know, we get, we're, we're all in a race, and the dream is our goal. God is, God, God's dream is our goal. Often is to be with Him, so we run to Him. But when we're running this race, we're, we, I mean, I know a lot of you guys are athletes in here, right? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but actually, you used to play uh, rugby, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, so you're happy. <laughs> but, um, so, so it's like, Paul says here that when, whenever he moves, whenever he, he trains, he has an athlete, I don't know, but whenever he trains, his training is not futile. You know, he makes impact. So he's like, he's like, he's like a fighter, but when he, when he punches, he doesn't punch the air. Like, he doesn't hit and hit nothing. But he always makes an impact with every movement he has. So, so, so as we as we pursue our dream, as God has given it to us, and everybody knows Jeremiah, uh, you know, you know, God has a plan for us, right? He has another scripture. So, as we pursue that plan and hope for that plan, we make impact with every punch, with everything we do. We make impact. So that's what Paul is asking us to do, so that we don't we don't live like. This dream is very far off and we'll never be able to attain. It is attainable. Because it says, and Peter says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, and so uh, we're, we're going to um, look at another point here that says that, uh, uh, actually, I want you guys to turn to this. This is really good. This is it's 1 Corinthians 15, uh, the very last verse, 50, uh, 58. So, so one with our dreams, we we know that it's never too late, and two, it doesn't matter our current situation, and then three, as we have, we as we work towards that, we make impact. We make impact with every punch, every uh, inch that we gain as we run. But not only do we make impact. With what we do. But 1 Corinthians 15, um, 58 says, um, praise God. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that uh, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So everything that you do, you know, because there's meaning. Sometimes you lose focus. Sometimes you, you think that, um, what you do doesn't really count for anything. So when we're doing that, when we're racing, when we're, when we're hate, making impact with our punches and, and, and running another race, God has asked us also to know that whatever you do is not futile. But if you're doing it in my name, it means something. It means something, in, in probably, maybe not in this world, but in his kingdom it does. And we know that by faith we do that. So it is not in vain to follow Christ. It is never in vain to follow Christ. So, <laughs> I, say, I say all that to say this. So you may be looking, after I said all those, gave all those examples, you may be thinking, you know, besides all that, I still feel like my life is over. <laughs> Where you feel like I, 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 this is all I can amount to. But, you know, I, I, want, I want to challenge you because um, you're, not, you're not so old in the Lord where you can't grow anymore. Um, 
you know, as, 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 we, as we grow older in God, um, there's more things to learn. You know, there's more, there's new things to learn. Um, the fact that I met with some friends last night, and uh, we were just talking about uh, testimonies and stuff like that, and God, and, and uh, I was talking to this older sister. She's not too old, but she's a little older than me. But um, she's just sharing how uh, God, um, God just changed her life, and, and, and changed her, her parents' life, and how um, his love melted his dad, her dad's heart and her heart, and reconciled one another. Uh, so God can do amazing things. Where you think that you hit a brick wall, or where you think that uh, there's no way out, God has made a way out. If we are, if we're open and willing to see that, and just for just for you guys to, to know, it says in Acts 17, it says, "And it shall come to pass in the last days." With uh, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall cross, uh, prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. So, two things I want to pull out of that verse is the last days. You know, we might be on your last days. God's still willing, He's still going to pour out His spirit on you and give you a vision and give you a dream. And notice that old men will dream dreams, you know. <laughs> so, you definitely still have a dream. You definitely still have a dream. And um, two more points and then um, we'll close it. And if we're going to probably have a uh, Florian come up and share her testimony here in a little bit after I close, and then we'll pray. Um, but, you know, besides, besides God giving dreams um, and our own dreams and our own goals, he has, he has a better way. He has a better way of accomplishing things. And sometimes we, we run against brick walls and we run against uh, situations that seem impossible and, and conflicting with what God has promised us. But during those times, uh, God just reminds, continually reminds me that we, just like a, as David said, I want you guys to turn here, Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5. He says, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not, forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all our iniquities, who heals all our diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who sat, satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So we have to command ourselves, all right? So like, so like when we're down and we're feeling like nothing, we have to remind ourselves. Holy Spirit comes in. Yeah, He reminds us. But we have to join sides with the Holy Spirit. We have to join sides with, with the Word of God. Because the Word of God is healing, like we were praying earlier. The Word of God is strength uh, for those who are weak. You know? So, so when, we, when we are at that brick wall, when we feel like, you know, Lord, I won't be able to accomplish this goal anymore. There's no way that what you told me about who I was supposed to be can ever happen anymore because of this, this, and this. And there are obstacles that seem impossible for me to go. That's when that's how David was. He 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 began to he begins to uh, re remind himself. His soul, he speaks to his soul with his words, uh, not only his words, but the Holy Spirit in him to remind him, hey, remember who you are. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You know? It's like you taking yourself and, and talking to yourself. But it's not you really talking to yourself, but it's the word of God reminding him, reminding yourself, hey, get up. You're a, you're a child of God, and don't forget his benefits. Don't forget his promise or promises are yes and amen. You know, don't forget that he loves you. Don't forget that he will revive you, he will redeem you, he will restore you. So what, what, I, what I'm saying is that maybe your dream is far off. Maybe, maybe you feel like um, today, you know, it, it's, you've closed a, a, a chapter in your book and you're ready to start a new life or start, start a new chapter and you have no idea where you're going to go. But, you, but I want you guys to be reminded to rise up 
and command your soul to praise God, the giver of your dream, the giver of your peace, the giver of your of your um, goals, your satisfaction, whatever it is, whatever it gives. He gives, he gives everything to you. So just be reminded to command your soul to praise Him. Be reminded to, to have Him flow through you um, so you can freely give to Him. It says here, I'm going to read this, it says Romans uh, chapter 4, verse 17. Because this is an example when Abraham, about Abraham. It says, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, and in the presence of him who believed God, who gives life to the dead, and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Amen. Who, who, uh, who contrary to hope, in hope believed so, that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God, though um, through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced, fully convinced, that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Um, so, you see this as an example because he got, he saw God as a fulfiller of his promise. And he does not go back on his word. So, um, I, I encourage you guys to see that, that that's the God you serve. That's the God that, that you live for. And, um, oh, I love that line. I just love that line. It says, um, in the presence of life to, to the dead, he calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Okay. Um, so, to remind you guys that nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is, your situation is not too big. Uh, your contradictions in your life are not too hard. Um, he's a God that calls the things that are not as though they were, so. Um, praise God. Sorry, I keep emotional. But anyway, <laughs> it says here, we're going to close. We're going to close. I want you guys to turn back to Numbers, okay? Numbers 12, with the verse we first started off with. He says, listen to my words. When a prophet of the Lord is among you, I reveal myself to him in visions. I speak to him in dreams. And we know that God gives us dreams, and he gives us goals, and he gives us life. And he gives us something to hope for. But what's interesting is I notice verse 7, and it says, but this is not true about my servant, Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him, I speak face to face, clearly, and not in riddles. So as I, you know, as I, I'm thinking, I'm dwelling, and I'm, and I'm, I'm on, this, on these verses. So God, you know, you give us dreams, you give us goals. But now with Moses, something's <coughs> different about him, right? And so, I just want to I just want to close the prayer real quick before Florida Florida comes up. Uh, but um, I just want to close you close your eyes real quick, and I'm going to read that again. And in your heart of hearts, replace Moses with your name. All right, I'm just going to do that. It says, "Listen to my words. When I prophet the Lord is among you, I reveal myself to him in visions." And I speak to him in dreams. But this is not true of my servant. And put your name there. He is, he or she, <laughs> is faithful in all my house. And with him or her, <laughs> I speak face to face. 
So, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that, that we do not depend on riddles. We do not depend on perhaps or maybes. But, Lord, we know you. We know you. We know you. When it comes down to it, Lord, it's about a relationship with you. Do I see you face to face every day? Thank you, Lord. Just, 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 just pray your own prayer. I'm going to read a couple more scriptures and then we'll pray and close and then have Gloria come up here and share. It says in Hebrews, in Hebrews 12, 24, it says, And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood which speaks of mercy, a better and nobler and more gracious message than the blood of Abel, which cries out for vengeance. So today I want to ask you, when it comes down to it, it's about a relationship with Christ. It's about a relationship with God. You see, because when you have that right, your dreams, your goals, your ambitions, they'll be aligned up with God. And He's going to make them happen. He's going to reveal to them your, the secret things of your heart. And um, does, his, does His blood, does His love, because that's what His blood is, it's His love. He died for us. Does His blood speak louder than your own voice? Demanding your rights, demanding that your dream be fulfilled, demanding that your goals and your visions be fulfilled? Because once His love overcomes your own voice. That's when, it, that's, when it, that's when your heart becomes to be melted. It says in Ezekiel, and I will give you a, a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. And I will take out your stony heart, your stony, stubborn heart, and I will give you a tender, responsive heart. So you see, so you can see and receive his vision and his dream for you. So let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that is how you desire to see us happy. You desire us to, to, to uh, meet our goals, Father God, in life. Lord, Lord you give us these, these God-given goals. But Lord, we push, we push those aside. Lord, we thank you that they're all attainable in your name, Lord. That there's nothing too hard or nothing too big. There's nothing in our life that can hold us back from receiving whatever you want us to have. But Lord, we just we just submit ourselves to you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that besides our own our own goals, our own dreams, our own ambitions, Lord, that Lord, we want to see you face to face. Father, we want to know you like you know us. So Lord, we, we just we just submit ourselves to you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to know who you are. So Lord, it comes down to it. That's what it comes down to. I might, be I might be starting a new life. I might be moving to a new city. I might be uh, starting a new job. But Lord, if you're not in it, it doesn't mean anything. So Lord, we just, we just want to come to you, um, Father, and, and, and say that you are king. Do what you want. Do what you want with our life. If, if that's you, would you just, would you just stand or, or raise your hand? And I'm going to... I'm, as in agreement, and I'm just gonna pray a blessing over that. Um, if that's you, thank you. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. Thank you. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. Father, when you see the hands and people are standing right now, Lord. Lord, they're so willing, their heart is so willing to just receive all of you. Lord, they're, they're so willing, Father God, to, to see you be lifted up in their life and their goals and their ambitions, Lord. They want to push aside. Because they know that you are, you're the true source of happiness. You're the true source, Father God, that, 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 that brings forth life. So, Lord, I pray, Father God, for those who have their hand up, Lord, I pray that, that, that they will just meet you, that you will just meet with them in a special way this week, that, 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 they, that they will see you face to face, Father God. And, Lord, that, that they will be like Moses, Father God, that they be different, Father God, amongst all other people, Lord, that, that, that you not only tell, show them goals, or visions, but Lord, that you speak to them face to face, and they know your voice. 
Father God, because my sheep know my voice, Lord. So we thank you, Lord, that we know and understand who you are. And Lord, I pray that for, for your blessing uh, amongst the congregation. I pray, Father God, that uh, we don't give up on our dreams. I pray, Father God, that you give us even new dreams, new visions, Father God, new goals, Father God. And Lord, let us not be the people who are left behind, but Father God, let us, let us strive, like Paul says, to run and finish the race, Lord, making an impact with every punch that we have, every, every uh, inch that we gain, we make impact. And let us know that everything that we do is not in vain, but Father God, that we stay steadfast, Father God, that we be unmovable, Lord, um, that, that we just believe that you're the God that calls the things that are not as though they were. So Lord, we just give you praise. We thank you, Father, for your heart for us. And how are you going to renew us and you're going to redeem us? In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. I know that.